One of the things that we try to do is think about both technology that people would make or utilize in, in the new world, or things that are pre-war that people are trying to get working now that they're sort of putting the pieces back together. Obviously, Fallout has the whole, you know, what people in the 1950s viewed the future to be like, which, you know, immediately becomes a huge playground for, oh, well, let's try this kind of blaster, this kind of laser weapon, this kind of energy weapon. It's not microchips, it's vacuum tubes. It's not hard corners, it's rounded corners. It's the ray gun instead of the M60. There was a lot of guns, and there was a lot of fun guns in the first game, but we've added so many more. And some of those definitely range from the crazy 50s sci-fi feel to the more contemporary, you understand why that gun is cool because it's a grenade machine gun. And you understand the machine gun that shoots grenades. It's probably pretty awesome. We have a little nine millimeter submachine gun. It looks like a World War II grease gun, like sort of compacted. And that's a really cool, distinctive little weapon. The Ranger Sequoia, which is this massive ornamented revolver that only elite rangers have. It fires like rifle rounds. It's very powerful. We wanted to make sure that energy weapons had a very distinct feeling from guns. We wanted there to be something mechanically different about them so that the player had a different type of experience while using them. So we introduced this thing called the recharger rifle. And the recharger rifle, you don't have to carry ammo for. It recharges it automatically. But it doesn't do it as fast as you can shoot it. You have to kind of pace out how you fire it. Our audio designers have put a lot of effort into sort of changing the sound. Part of it is because our environments are so open and there's so much desert involved, they wanted to make sure that they had distant sounds and close sounds. What we do is we take the Fallout 3 weapon assets and we have repurposed them so that they sound a little more like they're in the environment of Fallout 3. So you hear the rapport of the sound bouncing off the different spaces and in the mountains in the background and all that. We're working with Enon Zur again, and Enon was really excited about the sort of shift in locations. I feel that going on this game was sort of like a coming back experience, but also a whole new one. We've been very fortunate to have the best actors in the world, some of the best musicians in the world coming in, best composers in the world, and the best sound designers. And, and all these things have come together to really uh, create a soundscape that I'm very proud of. It achieves the goals that we really set out for this project.